Hi guys, it's Debbie with Debbie J's Crafting Corner, and today I'm going to be playing with these two new sets from Spellbinders. This is the Large Die of the Month and the Glimmer of the Month for June 2023. First, we've got the Whale in the Bottle, which is a huge, it's a huge die. This is going to be full card size. This one is humongous and it's got waves and it's got a, <laughs> a layering whale really really cute then we've got the sending waves um glimmer set that's got these two really pretty um waves i guess that's really the only way i can say it but yeah i really like those they are actually have got dies to go around the top and the bottom of each so you can do them lots of different ways so anyway we're gonna play with these guys today and see what we can create Okay, so I did a test run. I really love the way that this one turned out. And the way that I did that is I used a piece that I die cut out of this inner part of the bottle. So we've got our bottle die. Then we've got the inner piece that cuts out the different pieces there, the different layers. And I'm using this top one that is closer to the, to the neck of the bottle. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm going to just lay this across that piece. And I've already got my glimmer plate over here and I'm just going to position this so that this big piece here is up in that area right behind uh, my card and then I'm going to get this all ready to go just place my plates down and hit the timer and then wait for that to get done so that we can run that through the die cutting machine okay we're just going to run that right on through and let's take a look And I love both of them. So we are going to have two cards, one of them with this light blue background and one of them with the white with that pretty dark blue. And the waist I can use on another card using a solid foil plate. So I have got a lot, <laughs> a lot of die cutting done. And next I'm going to start just adding a little bit of color to the back of my bottles. Now there are, this is what the bottle looks like. So we've got the top and that's where we did the foil. Then we've got the center section and then we've got the bottom. So the bottom I decided just to do out of some dark blue cardstock. So that'll be great. Um, but I do want to add some more color to the back of these. And I did cut out a few, um, a couple of different ones. So on these, I'm going to actually use the same colors for both. But because this one is a blue cardstock and this one is a white cardstock, they're going to look a little bit different. Um, I think I'm going to start off with It's a Boy at the top because that is going to be where the sun is coming through. That is going to be where the waves are. And so I'm just going to come in with a little bit of that and just bring it on down. I'm going to do the same thing on the other one and it's going to look a little bit different on each of them because of the background that I'm starting off with. So you can absolutely add color to your colored cardstock to give it a little different look. Okay, so those are both with It's a Boy. Next, we're going to add some All That Jazz. And for this one, I think I'm going to start from the kind of from the bottom. I'm going to be layering the suede shoes at the bottom anyway, but this way it doesn't give me too much color going over that it's a boy, um, uh, over the it's a boy. And it'll give me a little bit of a, a smoother blend, I think. I'll probably need to go over this a second time anyway. That's what I found with most ink blending. Kind of need to go over it a couple of times so you can get your nice smooth blends but that still looks pretty good do the same thing on this blue card stock okay and now i'm going to come in with some suede shoes again from the bottom since that is going to be the darkest part of our ocean
So I'm cleaning off some of that excess suede shoes because it is so dark. And I wanna come back in with a lighter color. Now I only use one brush for all of my blues, but I do kind of want the lighter color to be at the top. So I'm coming back in with that It's a Boy. You don't really have to use three colors like I did. I just wanted to make sure I had kind of a good variation of color. Uh, even though this is kind of a small piece of cardstock, I probably could have gotten away with just two and we would have been fine. Okay, I'm gonna come back in with some All That Jazz. And you probably notice I am going from lightest to darkest. So that I don't, I don't really commingle my colors too much. Having a little bit of a lighter color ink and a darker pad isn't gonna be as big of a deal as the other way around. And this time I'm just kinda going across the center to try to get that blend, doing that on both pieces of cardstock. And to be honest, now you can hardly tell which one was the colored cardstock and which one was the white. Okay, and then we'll come back in with some more of that suede shoes. And again, coming from the bottom, so that it has the darkest color right down at the bottom of the card. And let's give it a little bit of texture with some water spritz. Okay, next we're going to create a card base. Now what I've decided for one of my cards is I'm going to make a shaped card. And to do this, because this is such a big die, um, seriously, from the bottom, cut line to the top cut line is exactly five and a half. So this means it's a full A2 size card. So I am taping my card base right along the edge on the right hand side, on, on the left hand side, sorry. And that is going to be where the fold is. You do not want to have that line further down because if you do, you're gonna cut the fold. So I'm taping that in place and then I'm gonna run that through my die cutting machine a couple of times to get that to cut through. And you also wanna make sure that you do it at an angle because if you do it straight, either horizontal or vertical, if you do it straight, it's not going to cut as well. It's kinda of like going over a speed bump. It just does not go through the machine as well. You do not get that even pressure. And I have had different, different dies not cut all the way through just because I didn't have it at an angle. And this time it did cut all the way through. Fab fabulous. <laughs> I have not had that happen very often. So now I have a shaped card base that I can start assembling all my bits onto. So I want to make sure that these pieces line up perfect. So I'm using some tape. This is actually just a piece of post-it tape to hold them together on the back so that when I put them together on the front, they'll be all lined up and I don't have to worry about um, positioning quite so much. Okay, so now I've got basically the background for my card. I'm gonna go ahead and adhere it down. I'm gonna basically, I'm, at this point, I think I'm just going to assemble everything on the card. So I'm gonna assemble each of the individual pieces and then put them on here. So I'm just taking some of my AdTech glue dot runner, putting it all over the back. You could absolutely use liquid glue for this. And I'm gonna just position that on the front. Now there is a very, very thin line all the way around our little bottle there. 
one reason I'm using liquid glue is so that I can shift it around so it just goes right up against that top line and layers up perfectly. But I also need to put the little tail on there first too before it has a chance to dry because I want my tail to be between the two pieces. Okay. So pulling those back apart before it has time to really adhere. A little bit more glue down for my tail. And put the little fins on. There we go. And then we've also got another little fin. to go under here. So I'll just put a little bit of glue there. And attach the fin to the front, or rather behind in the front of our little whale. And our whale's done. That is it. That's all that you need for that little piece. So next we're gonna go on to our next bit. We've got a couple of different things in here. So one of which we've got our cork, which is another quick and easy one to do. I cut out the bit different pieces of different colors of brown. So we have the light brown and the dark brown. And I cut out two of them. And basically these again, just layer up. So you're gonna have your light brown on top of your dark brown, and then it'll look like a variegated color cork. I'm just gonna glue those together with some liquid glue. We're going to go ahead and put our little cork on. It also means that this card, since this card base is four and a quarter by five and a half, this is going to be larger than a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card. So guess what? You're going to need to use a larger envelope to mail this out. So I'm going to plan on mailing it out using a five by seven card envelope. So now that we've got the base all done, we've got the background, we've got all of our um, bottom of our ocean, now we need to add our whale and our uh, our waves. Now I want to have a little bit more dimension. I mean, this just cardstock by itself is dimension enough, but I kind of want to do what I've seen, you guys probably seen it too, where there's some of the waves that's in front of the whale and some that's in the back. 
So what I've discovered after cutting everything out multiple times and layering them all up and seeing is this bit here, these dies are the ones that would go on top. Okay, and this basically lines up right with the edge right there. So it basically goes right over. It's it's cut the cut pile for the cut line for the bottom matches the bottom of our pretty much our sky area. Okay, so that's going to be the base of what's going to go in front of my little whale. Okay, and then this piece goes on top of that. So I've got a couple of different options. I don't want it to be all white. I don't want it to be all any color and blue. I want to have it a little bit mixed up, which is why I've cut multiples. Then we've got the parts that are going to go behind our whale. So those are what we're going to put on first. I'm going to go with the blue. And the reason for that is we've got the white background here on the other card. We've got this color of blue. So it makes sense that the one that's going to be touching it would be white on that one. I'm just going to add some liquid glue to the well, I need to figure out exactly where everything needs to go. So this one goes here. And this would go basically, it's going to go under it there. Okay. And then this one would go, well, that's the same one. And then this one would go a little bit higher up. So I think the best bet is going to be for me to layer all of my bits and then put them on the card, except for this bit. Now the easiest way for me to make sure that the edge lines up is to, of course, use my desk to light it up. Okay, now I'm going to adhere all of this down to my card base or to my card front. Lining it up right with the edge of my, the inside of my bottle. There we go. That looks pretty good. And now we can move on to this piece. Of course, I do want to put my whale down first and I'm going to pop my whale up on some thin foam. So I've got my scotch foam tape and that's what I'm going to use. And this is going to add a little bit of dimension to the whale itself. And then I'm going to add a little bit extra to those wave pieces. So let's have our little whale down. Let's say about here. There we go. So it should be a little bit below these additional waves. Okay, so I want these to basically overlap where my whale is. So I need the card to be about the same thickness as my whale. So I'm going to add a little bit of foam tape behind the waves. Now this is, I cut it vertically so that it is thinner or narrower. So it can look, layer right over the top. That looks like it's too close to the whale. Let me trim that up a little bit more. So that'll go about there and then I can add some more to this end. Okay, it looks like I need just a touch right there in the center. Okay, so that should be about right. And then I can just add some liquid glue over where it's going to overlap my little whale. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think I'm going to light that up a little bit higher so it doesn't cover up the whale's face quite so much. Even if it does have a little bit of that white showing underneath, I think that's still going to look good. So there we go. Now we need to add our little string that holds our little sentiment on there because I don't want to cover up any of the rest of this with a sentiment. There we go. And then we just attach it to our little note here. I'm going to glue this down so it's actually attached to the bottle as well because otherwise this little piece is probably going to pop off in the mail and we don't want that to happen so i'm going to do it right about there i think let's add a little bit more adhesive over here once it once it dries it'll be on there nice and tight and we'll be good Now, what I've decided to do with one of those extra pieces that I had foiled is I went ahead and cut it out and I'm going to add it behind my bottle here on a five by seven card base. So let's go ahead and add that down. Kind of towards the top. And then I can just trim off the excess. Okay, so now we've got another wave, if you will, up at the top. And then I'm going to put this one down, I think, at an angle so it looks like it's bobbing in the ocean. And I'm going to add some foam to the back of that. And that's going to finish up the second card. So we've made two super cute cards using a whale in a bottle <laughs> and the Sending Waves um, Glimmer set. So I think these turned out super nice. I may go back and add some more shimmer to some shimmer to this one as well, just like we did on the first. But even without it, these look super cute. So that finishes up this card using the Glimmer of the Month and the Large Die of the Month from Spellbinders. You guys have a wonderful day. Be sure to check out this playlist to see more videos where I'm using Spellbinders products. And I will see you soon. Bye, guys. Bye.